Well, hello. Welcome to Fiber Town. This is episode 167, and it's September 23rd, 2016. Welcome, everyone. I'm so glad you're here. Um, grab something to drink, and let's talk about wool and other things fibery. Um, so, if you are new, my name is Emily. I'm Chain of Fools on Ravelry and Fiber Town with an RE on Instagram. So, that's where you can find me. I'm here today in my kitchen. It's a little later than usual. Uh, I have an afternoon cup of coffee. And yeah, let's talk. So, um, some things to tell you about. The Smart Along will finish the last day of September, which is, is that next week? I think it is. It's October, almost. My birthday is coming. Yay! You're probably not as excited about that as I am. Um, so the Smart Along, the prize is a beautiful skein of hand-dyed um, fingering weight BFL blend yarn, which you've seen already. I'll show you it when I give it away. Go to the Rav Group and enter your things that are in some ways smart. And ooh, ooh, the October word is fun. Uh, it's going to be magic. Magic. Um, so think about that. Put it in your pipe and smoke it. The second thing is the Teasel kit giveaway. Have you guys seen it yet? So the coupon code has been extended and um, it's Alice Poo, all caps. Yes, it said your name. Did you hear that little tap, tap, tap? That's Alice. Anyway, it's been extended till October 1st and that's because the Seattle weather um, was really being Seattle-ish and uh, the yarn wasn't drying fast enough to get it listed um, by the release which was Monday so if you guys have not seen the kits are super cool um, Kimberly is an amazing fiber artist oh and we have to do the drawing I completely forgot so we'll do that in a minute I closed the thread out today let me open the, the internet here and hopefully it won't freeze in my camera okay so, yes, we'll do that. And I also wanted to mention Socktober. The Carolina Fiber Girls do an amazing job with Socktober. And there are lots of coupon codes and giveaways. And you should really go and check out the podcast for all of that information. Um, there's a nice coupon code for my patterns. I believe it's buy one, get one free. I should know this. But all the information is, um, you know, available on their podcast. I recommend going to the Ravelry group, Carolina Fiber Girls. Okay, now the other thing I wanted to mention is the letter press. It's just called letter press. And that is a pattern. I'm bringing up a picture right now. That is an amazing pattern you should look at. It's by um, Sarah Pomegranate of Yarns at Yinhu. I'm going to put her... Uh, Instagram in right now. Anyway, she has published. She when she, I think she's published three or four patterns now. Letterpress might be the third or the fourth. Her patterns are exceptional, and she. I can't talk and type. I'm sorry. Her patterns are exceptional. She writes them out in a percentage completed format, really well thought out. Thoughtful is how I would describe them. I like a lot of things that Sarah does. So, letterpress, okay. I don't... Sarah Pomegranate. I always want to put Dr. Pomegranate. Here, here it is, here it is, here it is. Yes, okay. This is what letterpress looks like. See that? It's a cowl slash capelet kind of thing designed with um, mini skein sets in mind, which are so fun, super popular, but look at all of the fun things you can do in this design. There's a starts with a cable and there's texture and yeah, gorgeousness. Some eyelets on that bottom, looks like an eye cord on the bottom. So check out letterpress, gorgeous stuff. I'm thinking about what I'm going to use to knit it. I've knit one of her patterns before and I love it. I use that shawl all the time. And it's very clever. All right, so the other thing I want to mention as I'm trying to get my, okay, now my computer's saying that the Wi-Fi is not turned on, so I may have to do this drawing a bit later. <laughs> 
Okay, the last thing I want to mention before we get into the meat of the show is Fleece Wise. Fleece Wise Part 1 has dropped today, and that is by Claire of New Hampshire Knits, and I've listened to half of it. I had to turn it off to take advantage of the little recording time I have still before people come home from school. And, yeah, I've already learned a ton. She interviews two shepherds local to her. One raises Romneys and, oh gosh, is this freezing? I hope not. And the other raises Shetlands. I think the first raises Romneys and Crosses. And I'm just fascinated so far. So next week will be Fiber Trek. Another Sarah will take her turn and do part two of Fleece Wise. And then I will be part three and Sarah Pom Pomegranate will be part four. <laughs> Sorry, my phone's buzzing. Yes, yes indeed. So, let's see if I can get... Let's see. No, that's not it. Have you guys gone to the Fleece Wise thread yet? A lot of you have, which is great. And you've posted comments and questions. Um, keep doing that, please, because that's going to inform what we do. And very valuable. There's a bit of controversy. Um, about washing fine fleeces, which is awesome because I have things to contribute to that discussion. <laughs> yeah, anyway, um, so many opinions, so many fleeces. There's an opinion for every fleece. Okay, here we are. Very nervous about my computer. My camera seems to be freezing. Okay, random. Oops. Dot org. Sorry, I usually do these things ahead of time, and they're a lot smoother. But not today. You get the, the, the usual dorkiness that is me and how I do things. Okay, so let's see. 44 entries. Two through 44. <laughs> Excuse me. And let's make sure we have it up. Come on, why are you not doing this? Come on, generate. Okay, we have a number 39. There we go. And that is on the last page. And that is Cashmere Wishes. Who is new to the group? <laughs> Very cool, and she is from Kansas, so excellent. Cashmere wishes, there's not your first name on here. You're getting the kit, kiddo. So I will send that your way as soon as it gets to me. Or maybe Kimberly will send it your way, but it's beautiful. Okay, so it's got a colorway that is very similar to this. I think the, the yellow is different. Um, and it's got the Alice bag and stitch markers that are so amazing. And I think some of her, um, I think at least one, yes, I, you heard your name again. You want to come up. At least one of her um, the note cards that she carries in her store, which are amazing for swaps. They're um, photography of a friend of hers that's all fiber related. It's great. All right, this is my version of pumpkin latte. It just has pumpkins on the mug because God, other stuff is gross. <laughs> Anyway, come here. You'll, if you want to come, you have to come. All right, let me close off this internet. Ooh, it's better with the internet lighting the screen. <laughs> okay, so let's get into FOs. Then we have whips, then we have sewing and dyeing and spinning and acquisitions. And then we'll say goodbye. And okay. All right, are you coming? Or are you just going to run away when I come down to grab you? You look so pretty. Why don't you come say hi? Stay. Oh, good girl. Okay. So, you guys, I did some weaving. Let me show you some of my weaving FOs. I find that when I stay away from weaving for a while, here, let's see, let them see your face, that I lose skills. Oh, hi. How are you? You like the coffee breath? So, Yes, I'm going to show you the weaving. The first one I did with Lammy Toes, which is the most amazing yarn. As far as speckles goes, speckles go. Check it out, Lammy Toes. This was the bad egg colorway. All right, you going to stay there while I grab it, Al? Stay. Okay. Stay. 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 Stay
say. Do you see out the door? So yes, I'm gonna put you down, kiddo. This weaving has the issues. Ugh. It's all about the warp, friends. If your warp is unevenly tensioned, you're gonna have issues. And I always seem to forget that when I haven't been weaving for a while. It's okay, and I did some smoothing out of things at the end, but look at this color, ugh. It's mad color, just like that new Tin Can Knits book. Mad color. <sighs> okay, the neon, the highlighter yellow just kills me. So yes, this is the Bad Egg colorway from Lammy Toes. And this started in my breathing space and it just didn't work out as the contrast color. Um, I'm thinking I might cut into this and make some sort of small purse with it. Or maybe I'll just Okay, I didn't need to wrap that scarf twice, but yeah, it's a cute scarf. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll keep it as a scarf. Okay, let's continue then. So I have another weaving. The warp is a lovely, manufactured in Italy, acrylic and mohair. I know maybe it's nylon and mohair. The weft, <laughs> the weft is this. The weft is top that I dyed. So here it is rolled up. This is the lovely, lovely warp, which actually I think would be, I have it, I have still warp on the loom because this ended up being just not super long. So yes, this is unspun roving. You might be thinking, what is that? And my answer to you is, I don't know. Looks like I'm playing an accordion though, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, so my husband's like, ah, it's a little mat for when I get up out of, out of the bed on cold mornings. Could be, fold it in half, why not? You know, what, what happened here was that I was looking at my fiber stash. It really is kind of cool. I don't know what the wool is, but it was sort of, I think it was given to me by Lara, Spinning Lara. Um, she's a really cool designer. Why can't I think of your real name? Lara Smoot. She has two of the cutest pugs out there on, five, on Facebook. Anyway, anyway. Yes, yeah, so she gave me some of this um, at Shenandoah last year or two years ago, and I dyed it. I dyed some of it purple, and I don't know if I still have that. And then I dyed a bunch of this green. And you know, right before you go to a fiber festival, you kind of want to clear out, well, at least I do. I want to clear out my sash, make room for all the new friends. So yeah, so we have this. Um, I might keep the mohair on there for another warp and do some sort of super crazy open weave. That's the other thing I have trouble with. Um, even in like sessions of weaving within a day, I'll leave the loom and come back and my, my beating the weft tension is completely different. All right, so that's the weaving. The other FO is not of my making, but I want to show you. Oh my goodness, you guys. My husband finished his first major project. He did make a cowl this year as well. But this is his hitchhiker. It's out of Miss Babs Sport in the coffee break colorway. Now look at that knitting. Yep. Another lovely scarf. He is quite thrilled. I don't know how many teeth he got. Maybe close to 30. 30-ish. It was a sport weight. And go him. And he's already wound up yarn for a hat. And he has his project after that planned. So it seems that I definitely do have a knitter husband now. And it wasn't watching me knit for all these years that did it. It was seeing his students knit with me. <laughs> he felt left out, I think, and he wanted to do it too. So I'm very proud, and he will be at Rhinebeck. If you are coming, you may be able to meet him, and he'll be wearing something special. Several somethings special. I'll talk more about that in a minute.
All right, works in progress. I have the Portland, let's talk Rhinebeck sweaters, okay? So Rhinebeck, Rhinebeck, Rhinebeck. I have the Portland pullover, and that's by, gosh, I'm gonna say it wrong, aren't I? Hang on, it's down here. Is it Carrie Hogue? Carrie Bostic Hogue? It's from Taproot. It is by Carrie Bostic Hogue. Bam, there it is, Portland pullover. There's the pictures. Hmm. This really hasn't moved very much, but I did start knitting more on one of the sleeves and realized, you know, you might remember that impatient knitter that I am, I just cast on this tiny, provisionally cast on this tiny sleeves so that I could do this magnificent yoke, which, let me bring it up closer. Yeah, it's, it was a very fun yoke, and I don't know if you can see, yeah, it kind of, it has short rows. I've modified the heck out of this pattern, which is, is fun. Um, I could never, I didn't write any of it down, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> there were increases and decreases and where there had been none before. Anyway, I was knitting away on a sleeve, and you may have seen this on Instagram, all of a sudden I noticed that the new skein I started was very different in color. So it was this skein right here. Oh my gosh, brown, why don't you, there we go. It was, it just had more tips from the locks. This is my Rhinebeck 2014 fleece, Opal. She was Rambo, Rambo, I say Rambo sometimes, Ra Ramboulet, uh, Corydale Cross. Very short, blocky locks, and the tips had in some places become sunburned and um, bleached, which happens, it happens. Um, you know, and just since I'm talking about it now, um, when you're looking at a fleece that has tips like that, in my experience, it's, it's, it's something you can work with. It may, you may just have to be aware that when you blend that fiber in, it's gonna change the color of your skein. Um, I wouldn't buy a fleece, I have bought a fleece with sunburn tips that, in fact my very first fleece, that crumbled off and caused naps in the spinning and that, that was, it was just not fun at all. These, they were, they were bleached but they weren't friable, I think that's the right word. I would not buy a fleece with sunburned and friable tips. I think you could cut them off, but you're going to modify the staple if you lose part of it like that. Anyway. So I'm using this, this um, skein, which is, it's really hard to tell that there's a color difference, but you can see it there, can't you? There's more heathering in this, in this ball right here. So all is back on track, but I am not, I just don't want to knit sleeves. And I'm going to have an issue in about 10 minutes because my other sweater is going to be at the sleeve stage very, very soon. So let me show you that sweater. Um, that is over here. Who is this? My favorite bag of the moment. Um, my favorite bag usually is my newest bag. <laughs> and this is my newest bag. And I've already got coffee stains on it. <sighs> First world problems. This is my breeding space by Vera Valamaki. Valamaki, this is coming it's coming right along isn't it I have stopped the contrasting color stripe I'm at that part of the pattern and I'm starting the part that's just that main color see I've got a nice bit of it started already so the gray is Tamar in the Lynn her colorway I love this yarn I just love this yarn but it's a blacker yarn long wool Cornish meal blend and then the white is Hedgehog Fibers, their BFL nylon, and that's in the teacup colorway. Not usually wearing the pink, folks, but I have found myself very drawn to pink lately. Yeah, very drawn to it. Um, yeah, so it's gonna be sleeves. It's very soon in about, well, not that soon. I have about six more inches before I do the body ribbing, and then it's sleeves. Mm. Um, I'm a little concerned about the hedgehog fibers looking like it might run out soon. Boom, that's how much I have left. If I said boom too much today, sorry. Boom! Anyway, 
I hope I got it out of my system. There it is. I want to knit on this all the time. Now, you may have seen that I pulled another bag out of that bag. Why don't I just show you? This is a um, needle adjacent, I guess you'd call it. I never really use that term, but it makes sense in this case. And the needles are Knit Pro Zings. And the yarn is Harrisville. Harrisville Designs, Watershed. That's one of them. The other one is Wound already. Oh, I love these together. Did I just whisper that? I love these together. Uh, this is the Worsted Weight Watershed 100% Pure Virgin Wool. And it's 110 yards, 50 grams. I'm going to make me a hat for the Rhinebeck. We should have the Rhinebeck drinking game episode. <laughs> Maybe that'll be next week. Although if you'd like to start now, it seems like you could. Um, of course I can't find the thing. Okay, it's out of this pom-pom, which I have said before. <clears throat> I want to make everything in here. Anyway, this is a color work hat pattern, you may have guessed. Uh, people. Where are you, hat pattern? Seriously? Here it is. <laughs> Ask love. Look at that! It's going to be purple with yellow leaves. Love the contrast. I hope it looks good. Um, and this is by Nicolina Lindsten, and Asklov is the Swedish, na Swedish name for the ash tree leaf. So that inspired the pattern. So this is written for fingering weight. I'm using worsted. However, the chart I think is it's going to be fine. It's like a 28 stitch chart, so I will just modify, modify it. I'm modifying everything lately. And I may look angry about that, but I'm not. I'm fine. All right, so one last work in progress, and it is a hoe, folks. It is a hoe. It is a heck of a hoe. It's a kilt hose hoe. All right, it is a kilt hose hoe. This thing looks so crazy ridiculous, just out here by itself in the world and not on a human body. <laughs> it's so funny looking. All right, so this is out of... Ross Farms, Cheviot Wool Highlander 2.0. Now, it's advertised as a sport weight. It is, you know, if you look at wraps per age, it could go in sport, it could go in DK. But it is 100% fabulous. Cheviot is the, here it is. So yeah, when it, the cuff is open, bam, there it is. Oh gosh, who made this? I forgot to write it down. It's here. This is um, cable, cable or cabled kilt hose <clears throat> by, oh gosh, Candy. Oh, what is your name, Candy? Uh, hang on, Candy something. Cabled kilt hose. Candy, Candy, I'm going to look up your name because you deserve the credit because I really enjoyed it in your pattern. Boom. All right, so it's, <clears throat> I should have done a tubular cast on, friends. Candy Wheat Croft. I knew it had Croft in the name. <clears throat> All right, so, <coughs> um, yes, knit on US twos for the ribbing, and then fours for the body. It starts with 60, it's a free pattern, 68 stitches. <clears throat> Actually, I think she calls for 72, but I thought that would be too big given the plumpness, generosity of this yarn. So then right about there, sorry, I don't mean to give you the finger, but right about there you decrease four stitches around and then you start this cable, bam, cable, bam, and then a little bit of ribbing on the sides of the cable. So those go down the sides of your kilted gentleman's meaty calves and then you come to the heel flap. I have made an ever so gorgeous eye of partridge heel. Candy calls for just a regular heel flap, but no. I, I have partridged it. Lovely. I felt it deserved something special. Then I did my, I did a double gusset. 
and then I knit, 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 and I just did a toe. I did a few rows on the toe that were two plain rows between decrease, decreases, because I like to do that sometimes. Yeah, needs an end woven in. <laughs> Folks, I ran out of yarn. I mean, I didn't run out. I had this much left, and silly me, I only bought one skein, so this weekend, actually tomorrow, I'm headed to Berryville, Shenandoah Valley Fiber Festival, and I'm going to get me another skein of the Ross Farm, Highlander 2.0, to make another kill toes. That went fast, very fast. It was a lot of knitting. Um, man, cables are fun, cables are awesome. Um, okay, so that's it for works in progress that I have touched this week. There are a few others, socks and another sweater. All right, so sewing and dyeing. I made this today. This is another willow tank. I'm going to get up and model it. Willow tank. Now, you might remember last time I showed you a willow tank I had just completed. And the bus starts were wonky, and it was the fault of the human error. My human error. I went back to the pattern. I had traced those darts quite incorrectly. Anyway, I did it right on this. Love it. See right there? See? Bus start. Did it a little looser in the top. It's quite fitted in the top, which I like. Now, I'm probably going to have to... This is a Green Line Studio pattern, Willow Tank, and there's a dress version that comes with it. I was in such a hurry to finish, which seems to happen with me quite a bit in sewing. It's a... Sorry. And instead of putting the armhole binding right sides facing... How did I do it? right side facing wrong side. <laughs> I had this shirt inside out instead of right side out. Put the right side to the wrong side of the garment, the right side of the binding to the wrong side of the garment, and sewed both of the armholes down, just the binding, before I realized my mistake. and said, well, let's see what happens. How about I just... So what I did is I flipped the binding over to the right side instead of the wrong side and stitched it. And I have noticed that this one does right here flip up a little bit sometimes. I made this, I got this at Craft South in Nashville, this fabric. I don't know what it is, but it's like a gingham. I think it's kind of cute with this. But I got it to go under um, Anna Cardigans. So I probably won't undo those armholes, arm sides. Nope. My next knit, um, knitting, sewing pattern Gosh, my hair is crazy town today. It's going to be this one by Anna Maria Horner. And it's a knit fabric. I'm going to do this one, of course. <clears throat> and I'm going to have to use a twin needle, and I'm not exactly sure why, but I look forward to finding out. Yeah, there it is. There's a better picture right there. So look for that at some point. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, I have started... Um, Quilt as you go, squares, and I used the fabric left over from my other willow tank, and I have four. And these are not always right side up. I have four more to do, and um, then I will put them all together in some sort of table runner configuration. And then the other thing I have sort of, I've put it in the sewing category, it is not. I have more silk scarves. Well, I have silk scarves that I dyed. And I use it's kind of the same things I used for my silk yardage that I made into a shirt. So primarily crepe myrtle. It was the end of the season and I really wanted to get some more crepe myrtle dyeing. Crepe myrtle and marigold. These are both from my yard. So let me show you how they look. Let's see if I have the right side. This is the right side. These are like 14 by 70. Thought about using these for maybe a podcast fundraiser. I don't know if anyone would buy these, but something to keep the podcast lights on. Because obviously I don't need four scarves, but We'll see. We'll see. I might do that. I might not. 
just crossed my mind. So gorgeous. Of course, these need to be soaked and, you know, maybe a little steam iron a few inches away from them to get the wrinkles out. Um, so these are silk charmeuse. Gorgeousness. They've lost that herbal smell. I did put some lavenders, lavender stalks in there as well. Some phlox too, but it's mostly that crepe myrtle. And then I'm just, I love how the marigold looks. Like that. So intact marigold flower heads with petals as well, scattered around. So yeah, that's a lot of fun. I'm glad I could get some done for the end of the season before the end of the crepe myrtle season. And that it was using um, hot pink crepe myrtle gives that purple. Okay, so spinning. I have been staying away from my wheel because I should be knitting Rhymex sweaters. I miss it. <sighs> my wheel has a little bit of rambouillet attached to it. Just white rambouillet. But I've been making myself knit the sweaters. However, I have treated myself to some fiber prep. The very oh, two here. This is North Ronaldsey. <coughs> Excuse me. I acquired this in Deb Robeson's class last year at Shenandoah. Is it last year? I think so. One of the most worthwhile fiber related classes I have taken. North Ronaldsey is an island in the Orkneys, um, technically belongs to Scotland. Um, I've talked about it before, um, a very Scandinavian influenced place, very little arable land. And so the sheep that live there, which are descendants of a Scandinavian breed, but now they're their own breed. The fleece that are the sheep that live there are kept off of the farmland. There isn't much of it. And they are kept on the beach and they graze on seaweed. And in fact, my conversation about terroir last week, the, you know, the how place and everything about a place affects products that come from it. North Ronaldsey was really the perfect example of terroir. And that is a sheep you can't take away from its, from its place. It does not thrive. Um, it has developed, um, to digest the seaweed and high iodine content. And when it's taken off that diet, it does not live or live well. So this is, this is, these are the combed nests. It's challenging to comb. And in fact, you know, you get, because it's on the beach, the locks, I saved some of the locks, the locks get quite matted um, and a little bit felted in places from the friction of the waves and the wetness, obviously. So it also has a lot of kemp it's, and a dual coat. So a lot going on. So um, let me see if I can, I blended this, the, the second, you know, the outer coat in with the very soft downy undercoat. Now this is kemp. This fleece had Kemp is like a hair instead of a wool. I mean, they're all kind of related, a follicular family, if you will. But this, this fleece has white Kemp and black Kemp. This is not, see in here, this has some of the outer coat. The outer coat is much longer than the Kemp. And let's see, this, I'm gonna pick one. <clears throat> see if I can pick one out, there we go. Hold it over here. Can you see it? That is one of the hairs uh, of the outer coat. Not a lot of crimp to it, just kind of, it's kind of a lot like a human hair. The Kemp is this crazy curly mess. Well, it's not curly, it's brittle. It's like, let's see if I can get another one. Here we go, here's a bunch of Kemp. Yeah, that's camp. You can see the outer coat, of, of, you know, much better when the locks are intact. Look at that one. It's 
It's going to be fun to spin. So I have the combing. There was a ton of combing waste because of the qualities of the fleece, just how it is. It's felted, it's matted, it's kempy. And so with the combing waste, I made two bats. And I'm going to spin these two, kemp and all. And these are going to go into some socks along with the um, Wensleydale um, that I have spun. The other fleece that is completely prepped is my Lincoln from, I should be able to tell you, it's a Maryland sheep and wool fleece. It's a Maryland fleece. Yeah, it was from 2015. Because this year I got a Gotland and um, a Coopworth cross. This is a third, yeah, is this a third? About a pound of what I had left. There we go, that's the true color. So, I'm either gonna have to spin this, I might spin this as a gradient actually, and I don't know, make some sort of crazy gradient something. So the lighter silvers, then I have some that are kind of blended, I could spin those together and then these really dark ones. There's one right here, and there's one hiding over here. That one. So this was from a Maryland farm. Lincoln is quite an amazing breed. It's a long wool. This staple length here was about six, seven inches. Still got lanolin. Um, this should be a fun spin. So. That's it for spinning. Acquisitions, and then we're ready to say adios. Acquisitions. I have from the very wonderful Wooly Thistle, the coveted Cornish Tin too. I may have acquired some of those. This is something that you get when you can because it doesn't come back. So from Blacker Yarns, Cornish Tin too. And this is quite, it's different from the first one. And I should have brought some of the first ones out here. I have a red and a gray from the first run. So let's see, the colorways are Wheel Kitty. And I know from watching Poldark that wheel is a, is, um, a mine in the Cornish dialect. I don't know if it's its own language, probably. Probably used to be. Um, I don't know if that's... How that's related to Welsh, I don't know. And then we have Dolkoth Turquoise. Love these together. This one is so unusual. I first thought it was gold, and then Claire said, you know, it's really like an over-dyed orange. And it's a russety, I think, I just love russets. And I think they complement each other beautifully. So I will use these in my Levitch sweater and then whatever's left over, I think they'll look great in a small project together. Because those color work yokes, you don't use a ton of the yarn in general. Which is why a lot of those, you know, Jameson and Smith comes in the small 25 gram balls, I think. Gorgeous. Um, I also had her throw in a zing. And in the mail today, New ply, boucle. I haven't cracked it open, but I gotta tell you folks, I don't know if they're gonna get me to want to do this. Does it mean I'm not gonna read it or I'm interested and curious? Because I'm always curious. Um, and it's good to know how things work. Ooh, and it already does kind of look interesting. I actually literally just cracked it open. Anyway. That is all. So tomorrow I head out to Bar bleh, Berryville, as I said, and then I will tell you guys all about it next week. Um, if you were coming, please say hi. I would love to say hi. And I might be wearing this shirt again. Yeah, because tomorrow. It's probably going to be warm. So yeah, should be a fun day. It always is. I love that little festival. Very fun, worthy place to um, go and spend your money. Lots of good vendors. Um, the Boy Scouts have Apple Crisp, I'm just saying. Last year, some sheep got out. Was that last year or the year before? It was fun to watch. <laughs> um, always entertaining. So if I see you there, 
hope you'll say hi and I will see you all next week. So take care.